12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Gonna need a bigger patio. Hey guys, welcome back to Baby Back Maniac. Today I've got a fun video planned. I have actually got all my cookers out on the patio. You guys have been asking me for a long time, how many grills do you have or what all grills do you have, stuff like that. I'm gonna show you what I have right now. Just keep in mind this is always in flux. I know it's crazy, I know like it's, it seems, a lot of people are like, how, why do you need that many grills? I don't need that many grills. I like that many grills. It's kinda, it's kinda like anybody with a hobby, you know, like the gun guys never have one gun, you know? Uh, other people, stamp, stamp collectors never have one stamp. All right, we'll start off here with the big green egg. This guy is the Mini Max. It's an interesting grill. It's got all the quality of the big green egg, but it's kind of too small to be a standalone cooker and too heavy to be portable. Good cooker, it's a little bit difficult to clean out the ash and you have to do it every cook because it has a very shallow firebox. So I end up using this guy, which is the, um, oh, come on now. Let me see if I can get my exposure to work for me. This is the Acorn Kamado. Not nearly the quality of the Big Green Egg by a long shot. Like there's just no way around it. But it's got some convenience features that I really, really like. Mainly just the ability to empty ash. This whole bottom pan will pop out and you can empty the ash really easily. Um, and it's lighter, it's easier to move around. It's, again, it's, it's a very, very good value. My wife got it at Walmart for like $37. So uh, it was a scratch and dent sale at the end of the season. There's a little scratch on it and the, my wife, who's brilliant, like asked him if he'd mark it down and he did. And that was, we were really excited about that. Uh, this is our Weber Q. Uh, again, I got this at Nebraska Furniture Mart. Again, in the off season, it's a great time to get deals, especially at places like Target. At the end of the season, they just start marking their prices down. So uh, we use this, we've taken this camping. I've done a couple of videos with it. I'll put a link to all the videos that, you know, I mentioned in this, they'll all be in the description box below um, or I'll put an iCard up, but we took this camping. I was really amazed at how well it did. Uh, cooked a tri-tip and it smoked beautifully. It was really, really good. We also cooked ribs that trip and I, I was amazed how much smoke you can get on it. Well, using a gas grill, what I did was I used a cedar plank as a heat deflector and uh, as my source of smoke and it, it just turned out great. It was really, really good. There's a great channel on YouTube called Fire Estate Escape Griller if you want to check it out. He cooks exclusively on this. He's in New York so he cooks on his fire escape and this is what he has uh, room for. This is the 14 inch Weber Jumbo uh, Smoky Joe. Um, truthfully, uh, this is one of the most affordable, uh, are we in focus? Come on now. Uh, this is one of the most affordable Webers. I probably pass on it. Uh, of all the Webers, I don't think this is quite as functional, unless you're gonna do something fun with it, like make a, uh, a mini Weber Smoky Mountain out of a tamale pot. Just look up tamale pot mod. Um, it's fantastic. It's a really cool idea that people were doing a lot about 10 years ago. And then Weber came out with the 15 inch, uh, 14 and a half inch Weber Smoky Mountain, and I think that kind of killed it. But uh, I love mine. I'm really glad I made it. It's a, it's one of the more enjoyable cookers to cook on, but a standalone, this just, this just doesn't bring enough to the table. I might pass on it. And in contrast, this is the Jumbo Joe they came out with just a few years ago. Um, it's an 18 inch cooker that has some of the same features. I feel like it has a little bit better airflow um, and it's just as portable. So this is, this is almost big enough that it could be your only charcoal grill if you weren't gonna be cooking a lot of briskets or um, you know, turkeys or things that were tall. So you, you know, if it fits under the lid, it'll fit um, usually. Cause you know, 18 inches is a good size. That's the same size as, a, as like a, a large big green egg or you know, Kamado Joe Classic. So good cooker. I got it for 29 bucks at Target, but it's normally $70. I think it's worth every penny of it. And uh, there's some really good videos out there from uh, TOS 10 Man. Uh, he, they're older videos. He hasn't cooked on it in a while, but uh, I, I really like this. This is one, one of my favorites. 
That is a pit barrel cooker. That's actually not mine. I borrowed it from Troy. I really like it. Uh, I, I didn't know. I didn't know what to expect. I, but I'm starting to see um, that is a really good entry level cooker for someone who just doesn't want to mess with it. Like it, it's it's all dialed in. Set it and forget it. Uh, takes up very very little space. I noticed when I was packing it up in the car, it packs up easily. It's a good cooker. Um, you hang everything in it, which is kind of kind of cool. It's like a, a neat way to cook. Okay, so these are the triplets. We call them that. Actually, we don't call them that. I just made that up on the fly, but it, hey, it makes sense. Um, this is a Weber Kettle Deluxe. This is a uh, limited edition uh, red kettle, and this is the 26-inch uh, kettle. Essentially, the one in the middle is like the Master Touch, um, except that it has a different grate in it, basically, and it's a different color. And then the, the Master Touch has an extra raised great which you may or may not be interested in but it, it, they're close enough that i can kind of speak to the differences by pointing this out obviously the master touches this one's this one is a uh, where's my finger 149 199 dollars except this particular one is on closeout at this moment at my at my home depot for 99 dollars. so just think you know think about it if you live near a home depot it may be worth maybe worth checking it out though you know the if you're watching this in the future it may be too late this is the 26 inch kettle. It's 508 square inches. Personally, I'm, of all the cookers on, on this patio, if the tornado were to blow them away, I, this would be the one I would rebuy first. In fact, this is the one that I, I recommend most people buy when they get started. Um, that's actually the slow and sear down there. Um, great, great combination. And, and for the money that you would spend, I think those two combined would be about 400 and, I don't know, the kettle's usually $299, the slow and sears, I think around $140. Uh, it's just it's just a fantastic way to spend your money. I mean, it, they, you get so much value out of that, you can cook anything on it. I mean, if, you, if you're not willing to make the plunge, you know, for 300 bucks, I totally get it. Either any kettle, any kettle that has that, which is a uh, ash clean out, is probably worth the money, um, with very few exceptions. The ash clean out also means that the grates will be hinged on the inside and those those are the two biggest elements that make life easy. You can sweep out the ash with one sweep and you can add fuel. This is my stick burner, the Bayou Classic. I did a, rev a review of this and a prime rib cook. I'll put a link to that in the iCard. This, you know, I, I've always wanted a really big stick burner. Um, in fact, I've been dreaming about a Lone Star offset forever. Um, I think they make a great product, but truthfully, I could not be happier with this. Uh, I, I caught a, um, a closeout at Costco, so I ended up getting it for $399. I think the regular price was like $650 or something like that. It's worth every penny of that. If you ever run across this grill, grab it, because for a family size cooker, and family size meaning, you know, I, I've gotten seven racks of ribs on here before, so it's not like it's small. Um, the construction quality is, is very good for the money. The temperature control is, is really good. The, I mean, it's just, there's very, very little rust on it, even though it's just sat out here for the last year. Um, probably used it 20 or 30 times. It's just, it's just a, it's been a really good investment for me and I highly recommend it if you can find it. This is the, of course, the Weber Smoky Mountain. I'm gonna get a little closer here. One of the most fantastic cookers, as far as smokers, probably the best um, again, the best bang for the buck out there. Very good grill uh, as far as versatility, the ability to do a lot of different things. Just check out Phil and Florence's channel. He does a great job of showing you how to creatively cook on the Weber Smoky Mountain. I mean, out of the box, if you just use it as directed, I think you'll be really, really happy with it. Um, but at the same time, if you think creatively and you kind of watch channels like Phil, you'll find that there are things that you can do um, that just might not cross your mind. This is a 1997 Weber Performer. Uh, it's one of the, this is the original style. It doesn't have the gas assist, but it does have obviously the stainless steel um, table on it, which they went, they moved away from. Found it on Amazon Marketplace for like 80 bucks. It was a guy's grandpa who passed away and he didn't want to cook on it. So he, he sold it and I was like, are you sure, man? That was your grandpa's and he was sure. So here it is. You guys know this guy. Um, just as a backstory or fill in, Weber did send out a couple guys and they replaced the hinge with one that has a slightly different angle. 
and that fixed the problem. I had a smoke leak. It was leaking smoke out of the front and um, by changing the hinge with a different angle on it, that got rid of the smoke leak. So for those of you guys who have been asking, yeah, this is totally good to go. Um, again, I don't have, other than the fact that I feel like they've overpriced it, I kind of, I'm kind of like most people, I think it's overpriced by at least at least 500 bucks at $2,000. Um, I'm very happy with the cooker. Um, it's it's really good all around cooker and, and if the 26 was the one I would buy first if all these got blown away, this would be the one I would buy if I could only have one. This is the Kamado Joe Big Joe. Same size as the Weber Summit, made out of ceramic. There is a lot of updates that they did on this cooker last year. Well, I'll just show you, let me move in here. So last year they did some changes where they updated their gasket. That is obviously held up really well. They fixed their hinge like used to be, um, after a while the hinge would, the spring had a tendency to loosen and people would, uh, you know, I have a couple buddies that had gotten Kamado Joe's and, and they weren't even able to shoot videos with them because the lid would come down. This one's doing great. Uh, I have a video where I basically make the point that it's so easy to lift this lid. If you can see, it's got a counterbalance on it. So you can kind of, okay, now it's getting to the bottom of it, but it's, anyways, I have this uh, review video that I'll post to making a joke about how like it's so light a six-year-old could do it and then I had an actual six-year-old do it she's my neighbor she's fun very happy with this cooker except for a couple of things one I thought I wasn't able to get the temperatures up turns out my my uh, thermometer was just uh, not calibrated John Setzler helped me figure that out I felt real dumb because I it's kind of <laughs> one of the first things you're supposed to check when you have problems like that and I just forgot I don't know why it didn't cross my mind I just never questioned it the other thing is this lid is designed to keep water from getting into the cooker. It does a good job of that, but the problem is the lid actually allows water to drip out. Like if you're on a long, low and slow cook, all that grease will build up. And then when you raise the lid, it, it causes a leak, or like a, a drip to go all the way down the back of the cooker and, and onto the patio. And it's not like horrific, it's just not, that's just something to be aware of if, if you encounter that. Um, so yeah, nice cooker though, really heavy duty. It, uh, it feels premium, so um, I'm sure it'll last a really, really long time. So, so this is a gas grill. This is the Mac Two Star General. Um, this is my favorite pellet grill I've ever owned, and I'm not kidding. I, I was kind of a, I'm not really, I like all kinds of grills, right? I'm enthusiastic about charcoal and stick burners. Pellet grills are something that I use for convenience. This one though has really grown on me and I actually think if it, <laughs> it's one of those deals where if I was not, if I just didn't love cooking with charcoal and, and wood and was just trying to get a great end product, like this could be the cooker. It, the smoke flavor on it is amazing. In fact, Troy, T. Roy Cooks and I did a video where we cook a brisket on it. And one of the things he kept talking about was how much smoke flavor it gets on it. And I, I, that's, that's what blew me away as well. Um, I'll put a link to that video as well. Um, but yeah, it's just, it, it's made out of three or four stainless. It's got a really cool side smoker box where you can cold smoke salmon. Or I've done salmon, I've done jerky, I've done cheese. Man, it, it just all turns out amazing and it's built to last a million years. Um, in fact, my buddy who <laughs> has one, his name's uh, David Paris, which is the owner of Adrenaline Barbecue Company. He's the one that invented the Sloan series. Uh, he's a buddy of mine. I've always heard great things and then David's recommendation was basically man it's a tank like it's if <laughs> all it needs is a turret and it's a it's a daggum tank and he's absolutely right and the people that work there are amazing bruce is like a brother to me again great great guys now i do have a bone to pick with them about this cooker and they they were this is not going to surprise them at all because i've been working with them on it but the wi-fi connection was one of the reasons i really fell in love with this cooker and one of my first videos uh, where I did a pork butt and I, again, I'll put an I card on this uh, I was so geeked out about the Wi-Fi because it was really cool to have that kind of control Well since that time I've had a really hard time keeping the Wi-Fi connected and the problem is, is it doesn't just lose a signal um, It when it loses a signal for a period of time. It will actually go into smoke mode It'll stop trying to cook at whatever temperature you set it at and so for instance on an overnight cook If you left it running at 225 you'd wake up and it might be at 
165 or 170. We've tried everything. I've upgraded my Wi-Fi in the house and truthfully, it's just kind of at the point now where we're still working on some stuff, but until you hear differently um, from me, I'll either put, again, if, I, if something breaks through on this, I'll put an update in the description box below because that's really the only thing I can update where I say, hey, yeah, we figured it out. But at this point, we've tried so many things and, and um, I'm kind of at the point right now where I'm just like, I don't recommend the Wi-Fi as much as I recommend the grill. The fact that it changes temperatures on you and it disconnects, not just that it disconnects, but I think I've tried as hard as anyone to try to make it work and I just can't get it to work. So there we are, that's all of them. You know, some people collect stamps. <laughs> so hopefully my obsession with grilling will help you. If you have any questions, if you're about to buy a grill, um, just put them in the comments below. I'll try to help you out. Um, there's also, uh, one thing I would say is if you can wait till the end of the middle of the end of the summer, you'll get a lot better deal, especially with the big box stores. Uh, that's just, they, you know, by after 4th of July, they start letting that stuff, the prices drop and they give you really good deals. So that's something to, to think about. Um, yeah. So I hope you enjoy this. Please subscribe if you get a chance. Uh, I, the support you guys have shown me it's been amazing. Oh, there's a, there's a bell notification right next to the subscribe button. I'm trying to remember to tell people to do that. YouTube has pretty much said that they're not necessarily going to show you every video on your homepage. They just don't do that anymore and they, they set it. So if you want to know for sure, whenever I upload, you got to hit that bell button and then YouTube will send you an email. Um, so yeah, hit the bell and I will put a link right. What will I put a link up? I'll put a link of the review of of that offset smoker um it's one of the best videos i did it's really entertaining um i'll put it right here if you click on this right now it will take you to that video and i really think you enjoy it you'll enjoy it like i said if you watch the first 20 seconds you'll be hooked so love you guys thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one